And mayor and council, I just want to let you know that um, Cameron is going to kind of take the lead tonight. I'm going to be here as well in case anything comes up, but um, just wanted to let you know that he's going to conduct, be the town attorney for this meeting. All right, thank you, Polly. I'm just waiting to see if we've got enough council members and we do. Okay, it's 6.01. I think we still um, gotta wait for Bob. All right, we'll give him a couple minutes. I just texted him and he should be logging in in just a second here. Thank you, Alicia. You're welcome. I'm a little handicapped tonight. I only have um, one screen, so. Um, yeah, so when I do the screen share, <clears throat> hopefully that works. All right. Alicia, can you confirm that you can see the agenda and nothing else on the screen? Yep, looks good. Okay, good, good, I did it. <laughs> yeah, I have the little thumbnails and the agenda on my side, so that worked. I'm here. Okay, all right. It's 6.04, let's call the uh, September 9th, 2021 meeting of the Hideout Town Council to order. We have a September 6, 2021 no anchor site determination letter that I've been advised I do not have to read aloud, but it is available. So this meeting is without an anchor site. We are um, virtual Zoom only. All right, let's go to the roll call. Bob Nadelberg. Here. Here. Thank you, Bob. Carol Hazelton. Carol Hazelton. Can you hear me? I can now. Okay, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Ralph Severini. I'm here as well. Chris. Hey, Ralph. And Chris Beyer is here. 
All right, thanks everyone. Um, on the agenda, we have a uh, public hearing to ratify and adopt the official zoning map of the town of Hideout to reflect existing zoning. That public hearing will be continued to our October 14th regular meeting. Um, uh, Cameron or Polly, do you have anything you want to add to that since we had noticed it uh, for tonight? I can just jump in because I've been involved with this. Um, no, it's just we want to leave it on the agenda because it had been noticed, but um, I guess you could open it uh, quickly to just see if anyone had came to this meeting to talk about it, but uh, this will not be discussed and it will be discussed at the next planning commission meeting, which is next Thursday. Okay, are you recommending that I open it for public input? Yes, just open it uh, quickly for in case anyone came. Okay, thanks um, uh, and I will do that. Thanks for the advice. So uh, we're now taking public input. If anyone had come for the official zoning map, a public hearing. If you are on Zoom, you can raise your hand. If you are on a phone, you can hit star nine to raise your hand and then you'll be recognized. Alicia, I'm not seeing the controls. Like I said, I only have one. I see a couple hands are raised. Carol Thomas and Katie Shepley are here. Um, Alicia, would you unmute one at a time? Yeah, if you just want to tell me who you want unmuted, then I will, um, then I'll ask them to unmute and then okay. they can do that. Could you unmute Carol Thomas first, just because that's the top one on my, on my display. Thank you. All right, Carol. Hi. I, I was just, so are we talking about the zoning map? Yes. Okay. So I, I have, um, I'm looking at the draft of the proposed zoning map. And I'm wondering why, what appears to be Lake View Estates, it's a yellow box just next to the um, Deer Waters development. And in the same scheme, it, it's, it's zoned. Um, it looks like it's going to be uh, residential medium density versus mountain. And I'm wondering why is that, why is that different? Does it allow a different height sense, potential height or setback requirements? Why is that different? Chris, do you want me to jump in here? I could help a little bit. Th thank you. I would very much appreciate that, Thomas. Sure. So Carol, the reason that is zoned, um, it, the, what happened is there was an MDA, uh, uh, a master development agreement between the developer and the town. And at that time it was rezoned to um, residential medium density. And so this is simply reflecting what is what was on the ground at the time of the MDA. So, our, we're, but that zoning map was not approved. Even if no. the, uh, this even is if this is a draft zoning map. It's it's proposed. We're still working through it, which is one of the reasons that we have extended it for some additional time to make sure that we get things correct and to get public input. But that was reflecting the MDA, the agreement between the developer and the town council. Right, but that's not approved yet, and that's what we're talking about now. So, what was it originally? Mountain and changed to RMD or? It was originally mountain, and then the developer worked with council, and it was recommended as residential medium density in the and, master and development. Can I get so what we're talking about is approving the zoning map. So the current zoning as RMD is not approved, correct? That that is correct. We have not this so, this zoning so map. I is want to know proposed why, zoning map. It's not up for approval. So why was it changed? To allow higher density? It was it was changed to accommodate the single family layout that was discussed and negotiated between the developer and the council at that time. And I think that would have been in around 2017, 2018. No, not, uh, can, can, I, I'm sorry. Can, can I jump in for a second? Sure. You know, we, 
Um, this is going back to the Planning Commission. So I would recommend that you reach out to Thomas, our town planner, prior to that, if you want to talk to him prior. But there will be the opportunity to speak at the Planning Commission. What, what's pending right now as the map is not really, it's not being considered at all by the council tonight. Really the okay. work is gonna happen at the Planning Commission first. So that's really the best place to be having this conversation. Okay. Um, so I just wanted just to do the formality of opening this up because we had noticed it, but uh, really the, the best place to have a discussion on this would be in front of the Planning Commission. Okay, so when the final, so we do not in the town of Hideout, there is not a final zoning map approved at this time. Is that correct? We there have not approved. There has zoning. not been a final, there has, there's not an ordinance which adopts a final zoning map. That is correct. And yet we are continuing to have developments that could potentially not meet zoning requirements that are yet to be approved? Um, I'm happy to talk to you about this offline. I think that, you know, this, this is really a continuation for this. And I'd, ra I'd rather have the council be looking at this when it's ripe for them to look at. And so if you have questions about some of this, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you or Thomas is happy to talk to you or we can discuss this in front of the Planning Commission. Hey, Carol, this is, uh, this is Chris, the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, do you know when the Planning Commission meeting is? It's yeah, the date? October, October 12th, the continuation meeting. Mm -hmm. I thought this was the zoning meeting. So the Planning Commission meets next Thursday. That's right. At 6 p.m. Correct. So, right. I, so do I want to bring up zoning at the planning commission meeting? Because oftentimes when I speak, we tell me, oh, this, we're only talking about this now. You can't bring that up. I didn't hear your whole question. Um, because your audio, so can I audio is not very loud on my machine. At the planning commission meeting? You'll have an opportunity for public input at the Planning Commission meeting, which is a week from today. Yeah, Carol, this item will be discussed specifically at the Planning Commission meeting. Okay, all right, I will we'll revisit it then. Yeah, and just so you understand the council, we're not uh, considering this tonight. This is a formality we, because we noticed it, we're opening and close, allowing public uh, input for the public hearing now, but council isn't considering anything. As our attorney said, it's not ripe yet for us. So um, that would be the right forum for you to express your, uh, your viewpoints uh, with the Planning Commission prior to the council seeing this again on October 14th. All right, thank you so much, Carol. Okay, um, Alicia, can you unmute uh, Katie Shepley? Hi, thank you. I spoke with Alicia today and um, she gave me Thomas's phone number. So Thomas, I'll be calling you tomorrow with some detailed questions. Sure. But my primary question to this group um, is I went out on the zoning map today and it's still very outdated. When are you going to put the updated zoning map up there such that we can review it and come prepared to for that zoning committee meeting next week? We'll put that up. The proposed zoning map will go up with the planning commission meeting um, agenda next week. So when will that be posted such that we can come to you with questions? You know, it goes to the agenda item number two regarding traffic complaints and the issue um, I've had at 11885 North Stargazer and the designation of the road behind us. And it's still, the planning map still calls it a road. So I really want to be able to see that and have a very detailed discussion either with you, Thomas, tomorrow or before the zoning committee meeting to understand what it is that we're putting up there um, for review that'll be finalized and approved on October 14th. 
yes, give me a call tomorrow and I can, I can walk you through where we are. But the planning commission meeting will be next Thursday for discussion and input. And we'll, we'll have a new map ready at that time. But certainly give me a call tomorrow if you have any specific questions ahead of that. Most definitely. I'll call you tomorrow and I'll go online next Thursday morning and hopefully it'll be posted by then to give me a couple hours to review it before the actual zoning meeting then. All right, Thomas, thank you. I'll call you tomorrow. I have your phone number. Alicia, thank you for providing that to me today. Well, all right, thank you. Al Alicia, do we have any other hands raised for the public hearing on the official zoning map? I don't see any. Okay. If you wanna remind everybody again, star nine to raise your hand if you're on the phone. Thank you, Alicia. You're welcome. All right, any more hands raised? I don't no, see any. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that, I'll, I'll close public input for the public hearing uh, on the official zoning map. And a reminder, we're gonna continue, the, this will be continued for the council to the council's October 14th regular meeting. All right. All right, next agenda item is open the public input. We're gonna open the floor for anyone to speak on items that are not listed on the agenda. So for example, if you wanna talk about traffic complaints, um, I, I will be opening up public input specifically for traffic complaints when we get to agenda item uh, number two. So um, if anyone has any public input they'd like to provide to the town council, please raise your hand. That would be a star nine to raise your hand or raise your hand uh, through the, the Zoom app. Alicia, I did notice we had uh, three emails, four emails. We already heard from uh, Ms. Shepley but we had other emails and they were all related to traffic. So uh, we won't consider those at the moment. All right. Anyone have public input? That would be star nine to raise your hand from the phone or raise your hand in the Zoom app. All right, I don't think we have public input. All right, with that, I'll go ahead and close public input <clears throat> and we're gonna move on to our agenda items. All right, agenda item one, discussion and possible continuation for filling the council vacancy. So as many of you know, we have um, issued a public notice both on the website and also through the Utah Public Meeting Notice website uh, that we have a notice of council vacancy. Um, our council member, Jerry Dwinell, uh, resigned effective July 9th and tonight was expected to be the public meeting to fill that vacancy. However, uh, at this point, we have had no applicants. Uh, I think we'd like to extend that, you know, to the next meeting uh, and can continue that since we want to fill this vacancy. Um, Polly or Cameron, I guess, I'll, uh, Polly, I'll ask you, what's, what's the process that we need to, uh, to do in order to continue uh, that um, vacancy? Just yeah, you know, for eliciting application and maybe go talk to friends and try to get someone to apply. This is a two year seat from what I recall. So it's not a lame duck seat. It's a seat that will uh, last for the next two years until the 2023 election. 
Right. The term will expire on January in January 2024. So yes, it's a full two year seat. So All right. we have to continue it. Yep. Let's continue it till the October 14th meeting. And uh, you know, keep keep at it looking for folks. So just a reminder, in order to submit uh, your your um, submit your letter of interest, you have to be a resident of the town for 365 consecutive days prior to the date of appointment. So if if it's October 14th that we consider this and we have an applicant, that person would have to have been a resident for the uh, the year prior to that, for the full year prior to that. Uh, you must be a registered voter in the town and. Uh, meet the other requirements of Utah Code 20A9203 and 10.3.301, which I think includes being 18 or older. Okay. Okay, so on to agenda item number two. That's the discussion regarding traffic complaints. So. I'll just do a quick introduction and then I think I'll, I'll turn it over to, um, to Cameron and to, um, to Tim to help, to help me through this one. But we've had quite a few uh, traffic complaints. I would say they were all related, almost all, not all, related to construction activities that were happening. Um, we've had complaints about the emergency access road being, uh, you know, many, many uh, uh, truck trucks and other vehicles going back and forth, as well as other, um, you know, traffic complaints. So with that, um, we were going to um, uh, talk about a policy or an ordinance for the uh, use of that emergency access road as well as just some ideas about, you know, what can possibly be done uh, in the town, con considering we have uh, such an incredible amount of, of uh, construction going on all at the same time. So um, with that, I'd, I'd like to call on, I guess I'll call on um, Cameron first, if you could kind of get us up just get the council up to speed on uh, what progress or what direction you're you're going uh, with regarding you know our traffic complaints. Sure, thank you. So uh, Tim and I have spent the last uh, week and a half or so looking uh, for traffic policies that we could use to to guide and, and advise on this problem, and we we actually found not a lot of resources out there. Um, but Tim did find a uh, Summit County ordinance that essentially requires construction to submit a traffic construction plan. And although it wouldn't, the ordinance necessarily wouldn't fit everything that we have, it does cover a lot of the concerns that we've heard um, from council members and the mayor and from residents. And so it, just in a broad overview, uh, it requires the, the construction entity to submit a traffic control plan uh, describing what the, the construction is, uh, different requirements apply to different size parcels and developments. It covers the dates and hours of the impact, the, the impact that would have on streets and adjoining properties, hauling routes, staging areas, etc. cetera. Um, and so what, what our uh, feedback is now to the council and, and on, to the residents as well is we, we want to work on drafting um, an ordinance that would enact this type of requirement. And, and what that would allow the town to do is it would have notice of when these events were going to occur and it would allow us to schedule and, and work through how those uh, projects would impact each other. And so Tim can speak to, to more how we would deal with that, but in a broad sense, that's what we've come up with, and we feel like this is a workable solution. And so that's that's the direction that we recommend going. 
and I'll with that I'd I'd let Tim uh, comment further. All right, Tim. Uh, yep, sorry about that. I had, my, I had my mute on. But yeah, I, Cameron actually hit the nail on the head with everything. And so um, I think it just, we need to put something in place and, and uh, have something that we just have a little bit more communication involved with the residents. And I think that's probably one of our biggest uh, things that I can see that will maybe help um, with some of these concerns. And, and again, uh, this construction mitigation plan that Summit County has kind of put in place before. Uh, I did talk to a couple of people there and it's actually helped decrease some of the complaints and hasn't gotten rid of all of them, but it has decreased the majority of them. And, and, and they just kept citing me. Everyone I talked to was some sort of communication is the key, whether it's a website combined with text messaging or email messaging to all the residents so that they know. And also another thing that they're doing is they're also uh, changing if it's uh, in certain areas where the town has been built or uh, development's been built uh, on the outside and they have an infill, they call it, where it's, they're, they're either doing a redevelopment on the inside or it's construction's been on the outside and they have new development coming in on the inside. They've actually rotated some of this uh, construction uh, traffic mitigation. Um, and so to where every, maybe one week it's it's going down this street and then the next week it's going down another street and then the third week it's back to the original street. So um, they, they've they just stressed again, like I say, and, and the one thing I wanna continue to, continue to uh, communicate with the residents who have been talking with me and with mayor that we're definitely working on getting something put together on the website and with our communication methods to make sure that the residents are aware of what's happening, what we are looking at, and then um, uh, going from there. So Cameron, I think uh, that's kind of everything we talked about. Um, is there anything that I left out that before I turn it back over to Mayor? Oh, I think that's it. Okay, perfect. Then uh, Mayor, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm I'm done. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tim. You're Appreciate welcome. That. You're welcome. Okay, so because this is such a hot topic, I would like to open it up for public input. Um, I know we've got folks on the call and um, raising hands. So if you'd like to um, share uh, your thoughts on the traffic complaints, um, I would ask uh, that you limit yourself to two or three minutes. Um, and that um, you know, you get get your points across pretty quickly. Um, we have had a number of emails and such, and I, I think I can read those as well, or parts of those anyway. So, if you'd like to raise your hand, um, raise your hand in the Zoom or do a star nine on the phone. And I see the first hand raised. Did I did I officially open it up to public input? Yes. I am officially opening it up to public input. So with that, um, Alicia, could you unmute uh, Jonathan Gunn? All right, Jonathan, you're ready to go. Well, first off, I'd like to thank you for taking the time for my public comment, and I will do my best to stay within the time frame you've, you've allotted. First, a little background information. Uh, I live at 11885 Stargazer Circle, which if you're not familiar with the area, is the northernmost house on Stargazer. There is only 30 feet from the corner of my foundation to the edge of the Jordan L State Park. There, the egress, the emergency egress road that is currently behind my house uh, runs about 13 feet from my foundation. Uh, it regularly deteriorates with each significant rain uh, and, uh, and, and so that's the background information. So now what are the problems? The problem is first and foremost is really heavy construction tra traffic. Uh, we have a motion activated camera. That camera has clocked uh, up, all the way up to 150 separate vehicle passes uh, within about 13 feet uh, of our home. And this creates some real safety issues. And uh, this has really spiked lately. Um, but one miscalculation, 13 feet from my home will result in a vehicle and or its contents crashing into a bedroom in the house. Uh, and I don't think I need to elaborate what that'll lead to. 
This is especially problematic in the winter when there will be an unplowed, snow-covered, graveled path early in the morning, 13 feet again from the house, one miscalculation and we will be looking at disaster. Secondly, it causes structural problems. When you have a three to 30 ton truck passing 13 feet from your home, this causes some severe rumbling as you might imagine. It also causes vibrations. And ultimately this is gonna to lead to excessive settling and cracking in my foundation. It also raises health issues. The excessive dust makes the balcony simply unusable. You can't be out there when one of these vehicles, these large vehicles go by. Uh, it, it, it creates a huge cloud of dust, meaning you have to leave. The rumbling is a problem because candidly, these, these vehicles have been starting as early as 6.25 a.m. And frankly, that just wakes me up. Um, so now the solutions. In, in my humble opinion, um, I do agree that there needs to be an ordinance. I think that ordinance has to bar use by non-government, non-emergency vehicles without the, the town's prior written consent, which we believe should be limited to inspection, repair, uh, enhancement, replacement of infrastructure. They can't other be, otherwise be accomplished from the paved roads, which is where these vehicles should be. And secondarily, the authorization should be limited to a specific interval necessary to accomplish the task and a specific contractor or group of contractors. We think enforcement should be by escalating fines for each infraction. Um, we also think that this needs to be enforceable by private action. And the reason why we say that is this, the town probably lacks adequate staff and resources to monitor and, and enforce reasonable limits. Um, and I am someone who's prepared to uh, provide private assistance with that. Um, presently, a solution has been implemented. That is the road has been closed at the north end and uh, a sign has been placed that the road is closed. And there is now a path that's been created off of shoreline down into the construction area. I witnessed several dozen vehicles use that, uh, that path successfully today. So something is in place <clears throat> which would make uh, the use of this road except in emergency situations unnecessary. We also think there needs to be a significant barrier at each end, uh, one which cannot be easily moved by unauthorized people, but obviously in the event of an emergency would need to be open quickly. Um, I, I'll renew our previous offer to contribute funds or materials towards you know, reasonable barriers. And if anybody wants to see videos, should you have any questions about what's really going on, uh, as I've said before, I am more than willing to supply any number of videos to anybody that asks for it. So once again, thank you uh, uh, for taking the time to listen to me. I appreciate it. I just want to stress what an enormous problem this is for us. Um, uh, you know, it, it's just been a real problem, but thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gunn. Really appreciate your comments. And um, yeah, we've received um, uh, lots of correspondence and videos from you. So I uh, appreciate your diligence there. Uh, uh, Tim, do you have anything that you um, can update the council on as far as what you've done um, with that uh, that gravel emergency access road and, and the entrance to it? Yeah, and, and, and one thing I wanna just make sure everyone is aware of is that for some, for some reason, we've gotten into the habit of calling it an emergency access road. Um, it is a gravel road, um, but the recorded plat uh, for the subdivision uh, actually does not show it as an emergency access road. Now there, I, I've heard that there is a letter from the fire district that stay, stated that they were gonna use that or they needed access to that until alternate routes were available to them. So now with the opening of the public uh, streets in both sides down in shoreline and then also in, in deer waters, um, I, that that so-called road is really just a, it's a, it's utility easement should not be utilized by anybody including construction traffic uh, other than mr like mr gunn said for you know either it's the city's going to use it or uh you know city authorized uh vehicles or construction traffic uh in regards to the utility easement so um so what we've done, done and gone ahead and, and per mayor's request before he left is I went ahead and ordered some Jersey barriers. They're the temporary uh, plastic ones that you can fill with sand or water. 
and we're going to fill those up and it's going to fill it up just enough to the weight poundage that if there ever is an access and fire besides they need to come down that easement for whatever reason, uh, they can actually push that out of their way with the, with the vehicle. The barrier should be heavy enough to discourage general use. And that's, that's the whole point of what we want to do to that. Now in the future, uh, as, as you may be aware of council members, that the utility easement will actually have uh, sewer go down in it with our lift stations as they come online and lift stations projects that we're trying to get started here in the next uh, upcoming uh, years. So that will be utilized to, uh, again, for sewer easement uh, for, to help improve the town uh, in the future. So we've, we've taken appropriate steps. Uh, I've directed the public work staff to make sure that we drive by and make sure that the, the, the temporary fence is still up until we can get the barricade in place and the signage is there. And, and it was today when I was there, when I drove by and, and again, we'll just make sure it, if it's down, we'll put it back up. And that's really the only thing we can do at this time. And if we see people using it, uh, we've definitely been in touch with all the contractors and the developers, and they are very aware uh, to not utilize that, uh, that easement. So hopefully we'll see a decrease in that. Now, again, that, that brings construction traffic to public roads. And that's, that's an issue um, that, again, with talking with Cameron, that we're, we're taking measures in place to help mitigate uh, the use uh, of, of public trucks, you know, to having uh, just maybe coming in one way for the whole life of the project. And so we're going to look at that very closely and, and come up with a great solution that I think will be uh, hopefully uh, uh, good to the good to, to, to the town council and, and good to the residents. Thank you, Tim. So is the correct term then utility easement road or just utility easement? I, I would just call it a utility easement because <laughs> there's no nothing on the plat that calls it uh, as a road. Utility easement. Thank you. I stand corrected. I will try to remember that. <laughs> Listen, I've, I've said it before. I've said access easement. I've said emergency road. So uh, I, I'm in that habit of also calling it a road, but uh, it, it really is an easement according to the recorded uh, plat with the county. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, Alicia, do we, do we have any other hands raised? Again, it's star nine on the phone to raise your hand or raise your hand on the Zoom app. Oh, looks like Bruce. Bruce has raised his hand. Uh, can you unmute Bruce, please? Okay, Bruce, you're up. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? Yes. Sounds like um, some back fill, but um, yeah, I sent a note to the mayor uh, um, two or three weeks ago. So I don't know if that's one of the emails that you have. Um, no, okay. A couple of my questions had to do with where is all the dirt coming from? Um, is this something that we, the town goes through a permit process to have all the, because you know, there's been a, an awful lot of construction, so we assume there's going to be concrete trucks and a few dump trucks, but this uh, increase in the last three weeks or a month, um, I've been noticing it going down Longview, and it's, uh, it's dump truck after dump truck bringing dirt in to create kind of a mesa down there in the shoreline development. <clears throat> so I guess a couple of my questions are, one, is the town aware of where this dirt is coming from? Do we know, is anybody testing it? If it's coming from kind of an unknown source, we don't want, you know, Park City to be sending their contaminants here or anybody else for that matter. Um, and there seems like there's been an awful lot of earth moving that it's, it's hard to believe that they need to bring in this much dirt and then just kind of pile it up in a bit of a mountain down there in shoreline. So. I'll leave it at that and hopefully you can answer a couple of those questions. Um, so with that, I, I'll ask Tim, uh, Tim, <laughs> yeah. do you know where it's coming from? I mean, I do. I've yeah, I do. I do. And I don't, I, I don't know other than what I've been told. So let me tell you what I've been told. And, and, 
and I need to dig a little bit more into this, but so apparently the both developers have talked and come to an arrangement with some sort of agreement that they can utilize the dirt from one project to the other. So that's something that they have worked out. Now, in regards to the type of dirt, you know, we're all licensed professionals. And, and one of the thing is, um, and Ryan, you may be able to speak to this if you got a minute too, if I'm saying something wrong, but um, in regards to the agreement that, you know, that's put in place, but how, how that dirt is, is placed and, and uh, if it's good dirt to use, that is all done by a geotechnical engineer who provides a geotechnical soils report to, um, to, the, to, the, to the city, or sorry, sorry, to the town uh, for the development. So I, if they do something wrong or they say something wrong or they're doing it uh, illegally, then the engineer will lose his license. It's a, it's a big deal. So um, that's all I know as of right now in regards to the agreement between both developers that they can use that. Now, the good thing is one thing I've also been told, and I think it's good news, uh, is that they're going to be done here within the next two weeks, I think, is what I've been kind of told. And, and so we'll see a definite decrease in traffic, construction traffic, uh, coming hauling dirt from that uh, uh, southern end of, of, of that project into uh, the other end of the project, which is on the north. So that's, that's where I'm at. That's why I've been told, Ryan, anything you maybe want to jump in and, and uh, uh, add to that? Yeah, I can add a couple things real quickly. Um, yes, it's permitted. And yes, I, I would agree with him on where it's coming from. Predominantly Deer Springs has got a fair amount of haul off and Lakeview and Shoreline have a haul, fair amount of haul in. So a lot of it is from one section of town to the other. There is some additional dirt that's coming off of our construction site on Browns Canyon. Um, I understand. Um, and yes, it's being tested. Not all of it has been tested, but it, it will be tested. So we'll know what's been brought in. And to Tim's point, we've, you know, what it is and that it's not contaminated is, has been established and will be tested. Um, as far as how much goes, historically, no, that it wasn't permitted and, and developers brought in truckloads of dirt and made mountains and we had no idea what it was for. This is permitted and we do know how many yards he's moving and it is being temporary, temporarily stockpiled uh, because we are working on approving final plans. And so the, the mountain or the mesa that's being built is temporary. It, it ultimately will go into roads. And what we're attempting to do with the, the big pile down there is, is raise the lower road enough that we can get the, a sewer line to slope all the way from the south end of his project around to the Vantage Lane lift station area, which will eventually eliminate some of our lift stations. And so there's a, there's a benefit to the town in the long run um, to, to that fill. And that's, that's why it was a permitted activity is a condition of the permit for all of these um, was that they had to work with the town and Tim on, on how to, uh, which access routes to follow. And so they have been working with the town on, on using the approved roads with a fair degree of success. I, I won't say perfection by any means, but the, the, the major developers have been working with us to, to, try different routes and try different things. And most of the trucks have been following the rules. There are certainly the exceptions. Well, that was very good. Uh, that was a great question and, and great answers. Thank you. Bruce, does that answer your question? Yeah, uh, I, I appreciate it. I just uh, wanted to make sure that there was a plan that we knew what the plan was and, and that the town is you know, I have permitted it um, because it, it, it just didn't know where it was all coming from. It seemed like an awful lot of dirt to, and they've, and they've pushed a lot of dirt around there already. So they've raised some levels over the years, especially in the uh, dead men's uh, <clears throat> gulch area, but okay, thanks. Okay, good. Hey, could I ask a follow-up question to that, Chris? Sure, Ralph, go ahead. Yeah, so um, Bruce, I heard you mention certainly, you know, the quality of the dirt, the integrity of the dirt. So, and then I think Tim um, or Ryan uh, mentioned some testing. So who does the testing? How far before dirt is moved into hideout uh, do we actually get to see the results? So um, be great. it's great to do testing, but, you know, how, how does that result in 
um, in, you know, kind of not dirt not being brought in if it's dirt that's yeah. contaminated? Um, how does that work? So this will be a less than ideal answer is it's tested <laughs> after it's been brought in. Correct. And so we, we will get those test results. But I, 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 so I caveated this is a less than ideal answer. It's, it's tested after it's brought in. And, so, and but the majority of it, isn't it, correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, again, I, as I'm trying to wrap my arms around the city since only being here uh, less than a month, um, isn't the majority of it, like you mentioned, coming from the south end of town and, and that's native fill as it is. Being so the native fill yeah, is so I'll, moving I'll, from one, one part to the other part. Yeah, so there's really no, I mean, I, I understand the concern is, are we hauling a bunch of contaminated stuff from Park City into hideout? And I don't believe that is the case. Um, it will be tested before it gets um, placed fine, you know, in its final location for, for that and a number of other things. Uh, but most of it, as you said, is coming from one part of town to the other. And so we, I, I don't have any reason to believe that it's, it's contaminated. And to the, the folks that are bringing it in, they're going through great, to great expense if it were to test positive, then it would all be hauled out and um, that's many an talks. I don't think they would want to do that. So it's in their interest to, to make sure that the test will pass. And, and who and who reviews the tests and what standards do we have on the test? Um, it sounds like, to, uh, Ryan, we could actually just, you know, run some tests on this dirt that's coming in and we'd have a better you know, feel for it. So we have some, we could post the results, so to speak, if there's, Certainly, if they were good, I'm not sure what we do if they're bad, but can we just put some results up? Do we know what we're testing for? That kind of thing. We certainly can. Um, and I, I can list the tests we normally have. I would say if the council or, or if residents have specific concerns, we can do specific tests. And as far as what's clean and what's dirty, the Utah Division of Environmental Quality has standards for not everything, but a long list of chemicals and so and, and acceptable levels. And so as long as we're under what they call the maximum contaminant level um, for, for the condition that it's in, that would be either declared clean or not. Um, and who does the testing? The, the developer and the geotech that uh, Tim mentioned will do the testing before it can be placed. There's, in addition to the contamination we're discussing today, there's, uh, is it good material to build roads? Will it settle? Will it cause problems? And we, we want to do a lot of testing as the engineers to make sure we're building roads on, on good ground. And so there's a lot of testing that goes into that before we allow them to, to build roads on top of the fill that they placed. Great, well, thank you. And, and there's just been so much bad press about you know Park City and you know the dirt that's being hauled out to you know to this end of 248. So wouldn't want to get into the same mess that they're in. I, I can coordinate with Tim and we can test some some of the piles and then I guess make those results public so that we can hopefully um, put everyone at ease that that's not the dirt that's coming here or or if it is we'll uh, we'll have those test results too. Great. Uh, question about who's paying for that, Ryan. So the um, developer and geotech does the testing, and then if we do some independent testing ourselves, that that's uh, on our dime in the town. If we would do additional testing, I would think so. I, I thought I, I figured Tim and I will talk, and then talk with the developers. The okay. tests are not generally that expensive. Um, my my first thought would be to ask, hey, based on these concerns and public comment, would ask the developer if they would be willing to pay for a couple tests. Yeah, or just to provide the testing that they've already done uh, already. Yes. Right. Great. If you guys could get on that, and um, that is definitely it is a hot topic. Contaminated soil. It's a big deal, you know, in 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 any mining community with a community with a mining history. So, all right. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the next public input uh, person. So. I don't know who this is, but S-M-U-E-C-K-E-13 at AOL.com. Uh, you're, you're on. All right. Thank you very much. This is, this is Ray Bordeaux, um, someone most of you have received emails from and probably cringing to hear my voice. I apologize. Um, I'm under my wife's name, so sorry, sorry to come in incognito like that. Um, Ray, can I um, interrupt you for a second? Would you mind spelling your last name? I didn't quite catch that. Sure, it's B R I. Uh huh. He is in dog E A U. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and it, it's good to hear that there's discussion going on because us residents feel like we are just getting bombarded with with 
traffic and noise and dust and and the developers being able to do whatever they please. So I'm, I'm glad to hear there's discussion going on. And, you know, it's, I'm sorry to hear that there was, you know, Mr. Gunn's house was getting rattled by all the construction traffic going within 13 feet of his foundation. But we have all sorts of other people on the main roads. Those poor dear water folks have a hundred trucks a day, probably going by their house within 20 feet or, or even less. I don't know how long, long those driveways are. Um, so there's got to be every construction job I ever worked on back east when it was that big, there was a haul road. If you could avoid residential roads, we avoided it. And there's got to be a way to use some other access to, to, to minimize this traffic. I know you guys said that the, 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 the dirt hauling is going to stop. But I mean, I had seven trucks sitting behind my house this morning. Um, I haven't been able to live on my deck in two years. And, you know, the amount of dust is, is amazing, but I'm really worried, concerned about this traffic being on these narrow roads um, and, and having an accident. And I think blocking off the emergency road is the wrong answer, because if one of these trucks tips over like it did last week in, uh, on the project, we're not going to be able to get emergency vehicles down here, ambulances, fire trucks, all that good stuff. And I think I wrote you, Tim, that I had an incident a couple of weeks ago. Or if I didn't get if I didn't get to the hospital in a half hour, I would have been dead, stung by a flipping little bee, and went into anaphylactic shock for the first time. If those roads are blocked, that access road is blocked. I'm done. We're gonna we have older residents here. We have construction workers who could get hurt if something happens on that road in, in, in the meantime. And those roads are too narrow for those trucks, and you guys know it. Um, we've got to come up with a better solution. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't never realize when I was promoting the use of that emergency road that it was disrupting somebody's um, life that much. And there's got to be, but there's got to be a better way. And, and we're going to have asphalt trucks in a, few, in a few weeks. And you want to talk about heavy trucks? That's going to be nasty. We're going to have more, more gravel being hauled in um, because that's what's going to be, they're going to have more bed, bed material being hauled in. So this, this truck traffic is not going to go away. And a communication plan is a start. And we really do need that. So I'm, I'm all for that. But I really think we need to rethink where these trucks are traveling. Um, and I'm glad to hear about the soil. So that was different than what we thought earlier, huh, Tim, where you thought I had to go and ask them about it, that they are submitting a plan? Yeah. And so, yeah, that was, cool. and, and, and one of the, that was probably one of the reasons why we brought that up and, and had talked about it between. No, me thanks for checking Ryan, in. Today, so, yep. Yep. You're welcome. I know you're just getting dragged into this stuff, but it's, <laughs> it's okay. It's my job. I'm excited traffic, to do it. Every project I ever worked on back East that was this big, we had a haul road and I drove by an old one the other day and the haul road's still there. And it's actually used for firefighting now. Um, but this is too big a project to let them play around in the residential area. And we've got, you, you got to help out those poor guys in Deerwater with all those trucks going by. I don't know how they stand it. And, I, and, and I'm being a little selfish. I don't know. You know, it's, it's horrible where we are, but again, Deerwater's is just insane. Those seven or eight, you know, duplexes up there. Um, and I don't know what we can do about it, but I really hope you guys look into something other than a communication plan. And, and other than routing it by Mr. Gunn's house, um, they can get these trucks in. And there's a, a guy who's driven truck once. And if you've ever driven a big vehicle like that, the last thing you want to do is be breaking down and going around these, these sharp corners with a full load on it and having some poor guy out there walking with his dog and with their earbuds and not paying attention. Um, we, if we can move that traffic away from the residents, I think you, you're going to find everybody happy. And I think the developer can make more money is the trucks are gonna be able to move quicker. And that's been my speech for about two months now. And, and I know, that, but I appreciate the public forum as well. All right, thank you, Mr. Bordeaux. Uh, that's the first time I've heard it. So I appreciate your comments. Okay. Okay. Well, Tim. Anyone, uh, do we have any other hands up? Remember it's star nine to raise your hand on the phone. I think I may have accidentally cut Mr. Bordeaux out, off. Did you have something else you needed to say? Oh, no, Sorry. I was just saying, if you ever need some, something to sleep, 
if you haven't had, had, had time to fall asleep, just check out my emails that I sent to Tim. <laughs> that <also>. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Any other hands? I don't see any. Okay. Um, uh, Mayor Pro Temp, uh, is it, I'd like to have Cameron kind of weigh in a little bit on the public street to, from, or, or Polly from the legal aspect, uh, not, not to, I mean, just to kind of let everybody aware. And, and it's good to hear because, um, you know, as I've been researching it, like Cameron mentioned at the beginning, of, or uh, as he mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, um, it, it's really kind of a Pandora's box for cities. And, and, and unfortunately, uh, you know, there's, there are things that we can try and do and hopefully we can do and get it in stock, uh, get stuff resolved. Uh, and, and have some with this hopefully new ordinance in place to help come up with haul road routes like uh, Mr. Bredo is talking about. But uh, I, I think it'd be good maybe just to have either Polly or, or Cameron weigh in a little bit on the public roads issue in regards to uh, the traffic. Uh, and before you do that, Cameron, if you don't mind, one thing I do want to let uh, council know uh, that again, my guys and I've done this personally, uh, I'll give you a great example. Um, I think it was Thursday of last week, I had people parking on both sides of the road, which creates an issue again, as Mr. Brudeau has stated and others, uh, you know, people can't get out of their driveways, for example. And so I actually asked the crew who was working on the house, I said, hey, listen, you know, here's my name, here's my position. Uh, can you guys move to the side of the road? We wanna make sure, you know, park on one side of the road we want to make sure that residents have access and in a case of emergency we can have access for the necessary services uh, and the guys they told me no they i can't tell you and they don't know i'm 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 i'm, I'm fluent spanish I, you know uh, native speaker and the stuff was coming out of their mouths so i just say listen hold on here just a second so i got their boss on the phone and boy he chewed them out and the next thing I know, they moved to the other side of the road. And he said, if you ever have another problem with any of our guys who will not move, you call me and I'll get them off the job. We'll find somebody else. So it's been good. I think the developers have been really kind of uh, trying to work with us on that. Um, and so again, I'm making sure my public works guys are also, you know, they see people parking on both sides. We're making sure we get them to move to one side. I was just going to add Tim and his crew are doing a great job on that. They're not alone. We've got the Wasatch County Sheriff and the fire department. And I've, I've ridden around with the fire department a few times um, and they will occasionally drive through and turn on their flashing lights. And if they can't get through, they'll cite anyone who is in their way um, to, to make a point. Um, and then as Tim pointed out that the major developers have, have, have seen the light and they are working with us. We still have issues with individual crews, but, we, we are making great headway. I know when I started here a few years ago, there were times when it would take 30 or 45 minutes to get down to do an inspection. Um, and I can only imagine if that was an ambulance waiting to get to, to somebody who was hurt. And, and it's come a long way. Um, I don't disagree. We have a long way to go. And as, to the, as to the public access on the roads, it, this is a, a situation that municipalities um, deal with and, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of friction and unhappiness with the various users, but the the issue is essentially the town cannot restrict a public road. They can restrict the time, um, place, and manner of the use, but they can't just close it to a segment of society. And so that's what that's what the the construction plan that, that Tim and I talked about trying to uh, draft is we're trying to figure out what projects are going on, how many vehicles are gonna be involved, what are the best routes that we can take them. And, and part of that is, is looking at haul roads and whether or not we you know, can require for a large development, have them you know, cut in some other access road. There, the, there doesn't exist anything like that right now. So that's what we're looking to implement. And so I think once we, once we do this and we have everyone going through that process, it'll allow the town to manage that a lot better and it will reduce you know the, the frequency to areas at different times and hopefully allow the town to manage that process better i agree cameron i i know you wanted to have a discussion with the council about um ordinance versus policy so it sounds like you've, you've already recommended um you and tim have started working on the 
construction entity needing to submit a traffic plan, uh, traffic control plan and having an ordinance that specifically um, yeah, out, lays that out. Um, the utility easement, which we were formerly calling emergency access road, um, is that something that would also require an ordinance or is that more of a policy uh, on, on how, you know, because that's how it's platted that and the town could come up with a policy on usage. Yeah, and, and Tim and I talked about that and the, the easement essentially is, is at the town's discretion to, to use that, right? And so when we tried to look at what policies we would enact um, to, to correct that, it, it really came down to the policy would be we'll try and minimize the negative impacts to the residents while trying to allow the property owners and, and residents to access their, their property. That's the, that's the challenge. And so the more we looked at that, it, a policy is not gonna be binding on property owners. It's not gonna be binding on developers. And so the policy really was more to guide the city's uh, decision-making, but, but the decision that we would make would be to try and minimize the negative impacts while allowing access. And so the more we looked at it, the more it just didn't seem like a policy was what would be effective because it would be just those two things. And so that's why we felt like an ordinance that actually requires a process, requires notice to the town, requires a description of the project would allow the town to manage it. And so the, initially when we talked about policy, a policy is more flexible, right? The, the town can, can change that and adjust more quickly. Whereas an ordinance takes longer to, to put in place, it's, it's permanent, you know, it takes an official uh, act to amend it. And so between discussing those two options, we felt like the ordinance would be the better way to go. And it's also enforceable, right? Through law enforcement and ordinance. Correct. And civilly, you know, the, the town has a civil enforcement program and, and a lot of this, a lot of the problems, you know, we, we don't have the resources law enforcement wise to, to respond on some of these problems. And so if we have an ordinance, there's a civil enforcement component that the town is, is able to use. And so we feel like that would be the, the more effective and more efficient way to deal with it. And by civil enforcement, what do you, can you just be slightly more specific for folks that yeah, don't so know what that means? essentially a code enforcement officer. And okay. so uh, that's, you know, it's very common in municipalities. You know, it's typically people think of that as, you know, the, the cars that are parked in the front yard, you know, with parts or, or, you know, grass or weeds that are six feet high and things like that. But code enforcement can be anything, you know, it can be um, construction parking. It can be, um, you know, the, use of sound or loud parties, or the, it can be any uh, civil ordinance that the town passes can be enforced with uh, civil fine and, and fees. Okay, thank you. Any of the council members have any, any questions for uh, about this discussion or anything they wanna add about the traffic complaints? Yeah, I have one 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 question, um, Chris and and Cameron. Do what's the data we see received so far? So I've heard you know a lot of um, yeah. There's been a lot of complaints. What I don't what I don't understand is, are they com coming from a certain area from a certain problem? Have we kind of di have we kind of analyzed that? Um, maybe that's back to maybe an Alicia or Jan or. So, or Tim, maybe you've, you've done that. What I'd like to see is like, you know, what's the summary of this? Um, where are complaints coming from? And maybe that's one place that we can start addressing our comments too. So they're a little bit more effective. Well, I can speak um, to the complaints from Mr. Gunn and Ms. Shepley there. That's from the uh, utility easement. So that's along and, the fence line. And, and Chris, I've, I've read those. So yep. in, in fact, I, I talked to Jonathan. So, okay. uh, but I was interested in, you know, uh, the particularly the, you know, the other roads, the bigger access roads, because I can't remember who was talking, uh, Mr. Brudeau. I think there's, you know, there's potentially a, a, a wide set of problems there. So I was hoping we had some data like, 
you know, what are we hearing from some of those folks? Uh, maybe along Longview and, and and those kinds of things. Yeah, I, I walked that. I walked the Eastman Road myself just to figure out what the heck was going on down there. So yeah, we, I think we're I think um, we're probably both there at, at one point in time there. So anyway, um, Jonathan's done a great job in giving us some some really good data. But I don't know if we've got any data on you know the other huge road that we have to deal with, where most of our traffic is coming from. Like Longview, you know. Longview is, and, and Shoreline. Yeah, uh, yeah, Longview, Shoreline. Any of the ones that you know have significant cutting across our town, and you know that's where uh, we're going to probably have most of the traffic. I don't know. Maybe I don't know who that's. This is addressed to, but have we put that data together, or you know, have we looked at, you know, where our complaints are coming from, and and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a great question, Ralph. Um, I think uh, I've actually received um, emails pretty much from uh, a lot of the residents and, and it has come from both sides. So um, I would have to kind of go back through my emails to see and maybe Alicia, uh, I think she's been getting emails too. And so we'd have to kind of go back and see maybe where they're coming from in regards to, is it 20, you know, 20 emails from the Longview side, which is the south end of town or, or is it the majority? Be coming from the north side, so uh, we can definitely do that and uh, get that information back to you if that's something that you would like us to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that would help me try, you know, and everyone here to understand where the the biggest problems are. And maybe you know that off the top of your head. I I just haven't read all the emails. Maybe I'm not privy to them. So sure. Um, and and you know the and and, and and you know the one thing that. You know, I've talked with Ryan, I've talked with Mayor, and I, and I think Chris was on when we talked about it originally, and, and Cameron, you know, unfortunately, they've built out on the outside of town, and now the, the now they're building on the inside, and so it's tough, because you, you, to, you, to get to the inside and the new development, you have to drive through the existing development, which was put in first, and so, you know, that, I think that's really hamstringing us, to be quite honest, and but uh, as we continue to maybe get new developments in, and um, uh, we will make sure, okay, let's look at the phasing plan on this, or does this fit in with, you know, uh, to avoid the least uh, complications in, in regarding to hauling material away and hauling material in and blasting and, you know, the things that go on with construction. And so, um, again, I think we're, we're, we're putting things in place to get to get it to the point where it's going to help us uh, move forward. And, and so, uh, but like I say, it's just unfortunate right now that <laughs> they're the, the development that's going on smack in the middle of, of uh, existing development that's, that was already put in place. Yeah, but good thoughts about the future, Tim, you know. What do we do? Because we got another thousand to fifteen hundred homes coming in here, so um, you know, staggering and those kinds of things would really probably make sense, um, along with maybe some permanent an access road, like that gentleman mentioned. Um, so, any, in any case, thank you. Thanks, Ralph. Looks like Carol, you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Um, I just wanted to comment that I'm also on the infrastructure committee. Um, I did miss the meeting yesterday. I had a conflict, but two weeks ago we did discuss it um, at great length, and we talked about you know who it really was affecting. Um, and it they come down Longview, I guess it is to where it turns into Shoreline Drive. Then they the trucks come along Shoreline. And so it affects, it affects everybody in shoreline one, because whether you live above it, whether you live below the road, you know, just on the other side of the road, we're all hearing it. And I have not had to set my alarm clock all summer long because at 645, I start to hear the trucks and they wake me up. And so, um, and it's not just me. I mean, it, it really, um, is annoying to all of us. Um, so if you need more data, Ralph, I mean, I can give you all the data from Shoreline One because um, we had talked about it. So, um, you know, it affects us. I didn't realize it was affecting you at the other end of Longview. So is that where they're doing the hauling with the dirt? At, at my end, 
Uh huh. Um, is that, no, no, we're not really affected at all, um, from what I can see, Carol. Uh, but I am mostly concerned about what you're undergoing, and how you know, and what what we'll be undergoing for the next probably two to three years, maybe longer. And you know, there's going to be there's going to be peaks and valleys in traffic, um, just in construction, dependent upon the economy and things like that. It just seems that, you know, we need to have some good data, try to understand what our situation is. And I know Tim and Ryan are tackling the problem, you know, so um, just what, you know, just wanted to see where the complaints were coming from. Now, we seem to be okay over here. And I just really feel bad for you guys dealing with this all the time because it'd be, it'd be you know, it's like you said, you know, you, you don't need to set an alarm. <laughs> nope. No, nope. and the dust. I mean, it's it's incredible the dust it kicks up, and you know why bother to wash your windows because the windows are just filthy all the time. So, and it also affects the people on Hideout Trail, all those newer homes. You know, as they're as they're coming down towards mm -hmm. the traffic circle, because that's where the trucks. That's how they enter. So, I mean, that's the data that I can give you as to who it is affecting. Okay, any other council member discussion? Bob, you've been very quiet. <clears throat> you have anything to add? No, I think I think we've uh, we've beat this all to death. Okay. Um, I would just ask um, maybe when when uh, we do have residents um, issuing complaints about the traffic, um, yeah, we, 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 we all get that there's going to be a, a lot of um, construction traffic and i just want everyone to know that um this whole plan was laid out many administrations ago by the original developer mayor and we're just trying to make the best of the situation that was handed to us and uh you know if if, if everyone has the right to state their complaints but i also like to hear some more solutions that uh, that the residents would feel uh adequate. It's one thing to complain, but uh, we, we need to have solutions. So that's all I add. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. All right. So it seems like um, Cameron and uh, Tim, you've got some work ahead of you with that ordinance drafting, uh, the traffic control plan ordinance. Is that right? That's what we're taking from this. Yeah, we do. And so we're going to have to, um, it looks like it's going to deal with some land use uh, ordinances and, and codes. So it's Cameron and step in if I'm saying miscommunicating this, but it sounds like we're going to have to take the planning commission um, for their review and then public comment and hearing. And then uh, if everything goes good and it, it'll reach town, uh, town council again um, for their uh, review and comments. So um but yeah, we've, we've got some work on it and we'll get started on it. We'll get continuing to, to go on it and hopefully have something here um, by the next uh, planning commission meeting. Not this next one, but the, the following one, because the next one's next week. Um, but uh, by the following planning commission meeting and then hopefully have it to you guys uh, at the next uh, town council. Yeah, that's correct. I, and the, that process and those dates are, are correct. Okay, great. So we'll expect to get it possibly get it back here at the earliest in november for the council unless yeah. we have some kind of special meeting before that correct and that's that's my goal okay all right thank you all right i think we're ready to move on to the next agenda item and that's a discussion and possible approval of a fee schedule adjustment to include fines for violation of codes impact fees, appeal fees, a variance application fee, an adjustment to excavation fee, and a general land use application fee. I did notice there was an email that came through. So, Holly, um, is there a revised fee schedule with, with some typo changes that you had sent? Yeah, sorry for that. Um, there, there, it's version three that I sent. Okay. I'll go ahead and display um, that. And did you close the public hearing um, for the prior oh. matter? I thought I did. Okay. 
Do you want to just say it's closed? Uh, yep. Uh, the public input uh, for the traffic complaints has been closed. Okay, thanks. I think um, I closed. So, okay, go ahead. I am. Um, so the fee schedule, I, unfortunately I had to, I found a few more little typos and a few changes that from talking to people today. So the fee schedule that's before you, there aren't that many, there really aren't that many changes to it. Uh, the biggest updates that Thomas can address have to do with the planning. Um, there you go. Yeah, so if you just want to kind of roll through it, and I'll actually let Cameron take the lead, and if I have anything to add, I will. So if you go down, oh, it doesn't come up. That's very frustrating. So the areas where for some reason, this version is uh, has accepted all the changes. It's not showing the red line changes. Really, I'm so I'm seeing red line on my screen. Okay, I just see the red line on the left, but I don't see it actually red lined. But I don't. Maybe oh. it's just my computer. No, no that's what it's showing. Yeah, it's just on the left. The red line is on the left. So, um... so Mayor, if you go to the review uh, oh. on the ring menu at the top. The word okay. menu. Yeah. You go to Oops. review and and click that and say show all. It should. Um... Sorry, I'm having just a little again single screen. Every time I go up there, something drops down. Hold on, let me just trick it. Review, show. Uh, got it. Yeah. Tracking. Track. Yeah. Tra tracking. And then uh, show markup. Yeah. And then go down, I guess, to specific people. Oh, okay. It should. If you, if you go out of the pull down by the simple markup, uh -huh. pull down arrow to the right of the simple markup. I think if you show all yeah. markup, it should. There we go. Yeah. All yeah. markup. Thank you. All right. So it is showing the red lines now. Thank you for your help. Yeah. So that first section uh, is has to do with the excavation fees um, and just clarifying for different types. OK, so we're adding excavation fees in red and then 500 and then the clarifications underneath. Um, Cameron, do you want do you want to detail? Um, so we're we're going from four hundred to five hundred with additional caveats in here. That's correct. I I can jump in. I I'm not oh, sure. Oh, thanks, if Thomas. On here, but Thomas, um, are you are you able to? Uh, do you want to display as you're talking through this, just to make it easier? Or no, this okay is fine. I, I can walk through as, as you scroll down. Okay. There, there's not too many changes, actually. But this one is just correcting the application and the fee on the application with what's in the fee ordinance. Um, there was a, it was a bit of a contradiction, four and 500. And so this confirms that it is indeed 500. And there are these additional um, uh, criteria for um, potential add-on fees. And that is just Again, ensuring that the fee ordinance reflects what's ex what is exactly on the application. Okay. And then the JSSD, JSSD sewer impact fee is cro there's crossed out and it says CJSSD. So I'll scroll down for that. So just for CJSSD, what we're doing is because uh, we are passed through for the JSSD impact fees, people, we, from now on, we are not collecting those fees. The fees are going to be collected by GSSD, and then GSSD is going to show proof of payment. Um, and we, if you recall last month, we passed an ordinance to clarify that that was the case. And so we're just making it clear here that people need to see GSSD to get that information, the, to get the amount. The next change then I'm looking. Be the following. Here page. we go to general land use variance and appeal fees. Yes, so we 
did not have uh, a variance application or a variance fee, an appeal fee, and or um, a general land use uh, application and fee. And so we simply um, looked through some uh, some similar communities to see what they were doing with regard to these. And so we've created new applications for these. I think it was at your last meeting that you that the council had approved the uh, code language from Board of Adjustment to an administrative law judge. And so this would, for, for an example, uh, a variance would likely go to the ALJ, but the application still comes through the town, still goes through review, and then goes to the ALJ, the administrative law judge. So this again outlines the application fee, the escrow fee for review, and then the number of meetings so that it's very clear what is included with that fee. And there should be one more, right? The I think there is if you go down. That's okay. it. Right there. And so this has to do with uh, the civil enforcement that we talked about earlier in this meeting. So this list finds for various violations of town ordinances. And so the, the ones that we've added uh, is essentially everything below the daily fee for each violation. Um, so the town uh, cannot enforce moving vehicle violations under state law that we can only enforce non-moving violations, uh, parking violations, unauthorized dumping, littering, um, any of those other um, ordinances that exist, uh, we just put a fine amount uh, to violation of those ordinances. Okay, and this is per infraction? Uh, yes, I believe the ordinance is written that uh, the, the violation is uh, either the condition exists per day or on an, or an as committed basis. Okay, at the end of the changes then? Oops, yeah. nope, there's one more. Actually, yeah, there are some additional uh, JSSD changes. Okay. All right. And and then, then, yep, go ahead. I just want to explain. So for that last one, I added the word town on section 10 to distinguish between town impact fees and JSSD impact fees. Okay. All right. Do the, any council members have any questions? All right, so, excuse me for a second. All right, uh, if there's no questions on the fee schedule, we have a town of hideout fee and rate resolution. Give me a moment, I have to open that up. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment, find it and share it again. It's so hard using one screen. Give me a second. All right, finally. All right, let me do a screen share again. Okay, hopefully you now see the uh, Town of Hideout fee and rate resolution. Okay, so um, Polly, should I read this? No, you don't need to read it all. You okay. can just um, ask for a motion. Okay. 
All right, does anyone on the council like to make a motion to adopt the town of hideout fee and rate resolution? So moved. Who, that was that Bob? Yeah. Okay, thanks Bob. I'll second. Okay, thank you, Carol. All right, Ralph. He's muted. Well, it would help if I unmuted, yes. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ralph. Uh, Bob? Yes. Carol? Yes. And Chris? Yes. All right. It has passed. Uh, four yeses. Okay, so we have uh, adopted the Town of Hideout fee and rate resolution um, and repealed and replaced the resolution dated uh, June 24th, 2021. Terrific. Thank you. Moving on to the last agenda item. Um, this is to authorize the mayor to purchase an additional public works vehicle, a truck, um, with a not to exceed price of $20,000. So I don't have um, a whole lot of background on this. So Tim, would you mind um, <laughs> yeah. sharing with the council what's, um, you know, the, uh, what's, what's driving the need and, and what, what's being requested? Yep, yeah, absolutely. And thank you for considering this item for uh, the public works department. Um, so with the hiring of myself, and we actually do have someone else coming on in October, uh, this is going to necessitate the need for another vehicle. Um, we currently have uh, two vehicles in town um, that is used for public works. We do have the police vehicle uh, that is actually in the shop. And to be honest, it's, it, we don't know if we're going to take it back. It's in that much need of repair. So um, we actually uh, were looking at a vehicle that was from the Park City School District that they put up on Utah State or the State of Utah uh, Vehicle Surplus auction webpage. Um, I went and checked it out. It was good. Uh, it would be ready. To, it had a snow plow attached to it already. Um, and again, uh, we started bidding on it and the final week and only bid up to $9,999 uh, without uh, getting council approval. Uh, it actually sold to some lucky winner uh, for $10,175. So uh, mayor, <laughs> so once I told mayor that, I'm actually pleased to see this on the agenda. I did not ask to have this put on the agenda, but um, I think something like that really would help us out. It was, it was a pretty good shape vehicle that we could have got for uh, for a little under 10,500, I would imagine, um, that had a snow plow that would be uh, available to use for myself and other uh, employees that we bring on, especially uh, in the winter for snow plow. So uh, I, I, once again, I, I, I'm grateful that this is on the agenda and I, and I appreciate your consideration. All right, does anyone have any questions for, for Tim? All right, um, if there are no questions, Cameron, what do we need to do? Yeah, so I think it's just uh, an, an advise and, and agree. The, the council's in charge of the budget, and so this is uh, within the budget, and so they don't, you don't need to amend the budget, but it's just a matter of, of approving the, the amount. The statute requires you know, a formal approval over 25,000, and so this is under that, you know, they're intending to spend less than than they have to but up to 20 and so it's just a matter of of saying yes we understand why and, and whether or not the council is is okay with that expenditure does that require any kind of vote or are we just doing kind of a, a round robin to say we're okay with it yeah just an agreement and you know you can, you can read yeah. the agenda item and say this is what's at, at issue so yeah you should do an official vote okay um do we need a motion uh, for it? Yeah, yeah, motion, and then you can just read what the agenda item is. Okay. Uh, so, would anyone like to 
Move to authorize the mayor to purchase an additional public works vehicle truck with a not to exceed price of $20,000. So moved. Thank you, Bob. I'll second. Thank you, Carol. Okay. Ralph. Yep. Bob. Yes. Carol. Yes. And Chris is a yes. All right. So we all agree. I hope you can find a good a good deal as good as the one that you <laughs> we lost were unable to close on. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, I should have mentioned. And I do apologize, uh, Council. That uh, we'll we'll de me and Alicia. We've been looking through um, the state of Utah surplus. Uh, we will find something and and we'll make sure it definitely fits the town's needs. Not only now, but uh, as we move into the future. Thank you. And we can all hope that we're going to need that snowplow coming this way. <laughs> yes, that's very true. I would agree with that. Okay. All right. With that, we've reached the end of our regular agenda. Um, a question for Polly. I, I don't think we have anything to discuss in executive, do we? No, we, we don't need an executive session tonight. Let's take advantage of a shorter night. <laughs> yes. This is a record quick meeting except for one agenda item, but thank you. Okay, great. With that, uh, do I have a motion to end uh, the council meeting? Uh, did I do that right? Yeah. I so move. Okay. Second. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Bob. Ralph. Yes. Carol. Yes. Bob. Yes. And Chris, it's a yes. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time tonight. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.